I was born in the northeast of England, probably about 20 miles from where we are now in the, the <coughs> O&M base, so I think my accent is a little bit of a giveaway in that regard. So I was brought up here and I was the youngest of, uh, in the family. Um, if my father actually worked in the mining industry, so you could see I've kind of transitioned in the next generation in the family into the renewables energy. I spent probably the first five or six years in manufacturing, uh, taking on various project and operational roles there. Uh, before I then realised I seen the renewable energy industry starting to grow, especially onshore in the UK, and I thought I want to be a part of that. So 20 years ago I made that decision to move into there. And to be quite honest, I've never looked back since. It's it's such a growth industry, and I've I've seen us as an industry grow from you know one two megawatt turbines. Now at Dogbank where we'll be installing 14 megawatt G Halle IDEX wind turbines. When I, I did my degree, I'm, I'm more specialised in in power engineering, so it was a little bit of a passion of me, and then I could just see the future and. and and as a growth industry and something exciting to be in, it was only going to go from strength to strength, so I just thought, for me, that, that's what I want to be involved in. Very privileged, to be honest. I think if somebody asked me 20 years ago when I first started in this journey and said, in 20 years' time, you will lead the world's largest offshore wind farm into operations, that'll, that'll be fantastic. That's, that's some goal and ambition, so for me, it's a great privilege. So the wind farm will become operational in, uh, towards the end of summer this year, so not long now, so around six months six months time, so that's very much why it was important for us to, to get into the building, to give us like six months of readiness for the teams to come in and to be ready for mobilisation. The key here you can see this is our warehouse, so we're, we're starting to get that warehouse now ready for racking, for turbine components, coming service kits ready to go on the, the SOVs. We'll have goods inwards area, goods out area, customs clearance areas and shipment lanes straight for our SOV for the transfer of goods from this warehouse. So it's very important to get that ready for day one operations. Our job is once the turbines start becoming operational in summer is to keep them operational and to ensure they're maintained. Once the first turbine's installed in the summer, the ramp up of turbine installation will then continue throughout the year and we would expect to take over operations of the full Doggerbank Air Wind Farm early quarter to 2024. It was important for our, our, the selection of our own m base that we could get the key side that was really close to our own m building and warehouse and what we have here in the port of Tyne is literally a key side that's just outside of our warehouse that gives us a very efficient turnaround for the movement of materials as well as personnel. And it's not just space as well, it's about access for our vessels. So our vessels need uh, water depth and the Port of Tyne has traditionally had a lot of cruise ships in this area and so it was absolutely an ideal place for bringing our service operation vessels in. Well, we actually started recruitment back in early 2021 um, and that was because we needed to get operational personnel in early enough so they could start to uh, help us to be ready to take the asset on, to understand the asset. So some of our engineers and technician staff, they're involved in uh, commissioning walk downs of assets for technical acceptance of those assets. So we know the health and of those assets when we take that on to operations. So it's very important to get people in early enough to get them trained and familiar with the equipment. We have rules for engineers, that could be wind turbine engineers, it could be transmission engineers, those with electrical backgrounds, process and mechanical backgrounds for, for transmission system, cooling systems. We also have uh, administrative staff, financial staff, um, health and safety, our onshore leaders, uh, the logistics staff, so there's quite a lot and varied rules that uh, we need to operate the wind farm. I think the, the type of uh, temper and people we get, it, it very much depends on the role. For engineers, we want that logical, technical, analytic thinking, control room operators, we want again people who are very logical and works there, but then we, we need innovators of, as well and we need people to to see different ways of work and that's why in terms of uh, our health and safety people uh, we need different mindset there. We need technicians or offshore personnel that are physically fit and able to, to work offshore so they have to go through uh, GWO training to be able to work offshore. So that's really important so we have a very mixture of roles from whether it's onshore and offshore and very much different mindsets but everyone working towards the same goal and that's uh, 
ensuring we continue to operate the world's largest offshore wind farm. It's a growth industry and it's, it's, it's an exciting industry and it's here for the long term. And that is one of the reasons why we're in the northeast of England, not just because the port was the right location for us, but the skill set and the people who are heavy industry, the skill set of people in the northeast. It's, it's a, a great area for transitioning those skills into offshore wind and we've seen that. We've brought people in from manufacturing backgrounds, we've brought people in from the real network, we've brought people in from chemical backgrounds to help. So, so we've got a very varied uh, skill set that we've transitioned into renewables. It's, it's a fantastic to, to, to have been born in the North East and see something like this happen in the North East. It, it gives me great pride. And I think it, to be involved in a project of this scale as well and a lot of new innovation, we have uh, the new G Halide X turbines, you know, which is 13 megawatt and 14 megawatt that we're using. We're the first UK offshore wind farm to use a HVDC connection. 1.2 gigawatt for each of our phases and that's to reduce power losses so so we've had a lot of innovation in the in the wind farm.